torque, to wrap things up here, is what causes angular acceleration. Now, that seems familiar. You remember that a net force causes a linear acceleration. And because this causes that, this has to be in the same direction as that. Well, now what we're saying is that a net torque causes an angular acceleration. Okay? An angular acceleration. Now, the direction, therefore, needs to be in the same direction as alpha. And what we found with our alpha is that sometimes we are having an alpha that's out of the page, and sometimes we're having an alpha that's into the page. And so we're going to need a new right-hand rule. Our first right-hand rule was for omega. I take the fingers of my right hand and I revolve them, I rotate them with the wheel. My thumb is telling me the direction of the omega vector. For torque, I do something very different. I start at the pivot, and I reach out to where the force is applied. I reach out to where the force is applied. This is the important step. I turn my wrist so that I can girly wave. There, I said it. Okay. Girly wave in the direction of the force. My thumb is pointing in the direction of the torque. Okay. So you start at the pivot. You just reach out to the force, turn your wrist so you can wave in the direction of the force. Your thumb is pointing in the direction of the torque. Now, if that force were acting always at that angle relative to this vector, this thing would start spinning. It would start spinning counterclockwise. What direction would the omega point? Out of the board, okay? And if it's spinning up from rest, it's speeding up. So what direction would the alpha point if the omega's out and it's speeding up? Out, okay? And sure enough, this torque is out. It's causing the alpha. It's causing the alpha. 